Evening everyone and welcome to the jungle. Dexter Jackson, the Bengals signed the former Super Bowl MVP safety from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to a four year $7.6 million deal to be a starter next to Medea Williams next year. Well, the Bengals suffered from poor tackling all season last season, but the soon to be 29 year old has a reputation as a cover safety who can hit and finish. I was talking to uh, Davis at the Super Bowl, and he was like, why do you think this is a lot of big runs? I said, well, no, no tackling, no overfield tackling. And he 100% agreed that it's no, no safe as on tackle like they used to tackle. So um, that's one of my strengths. A great tackler. Uh, he's had great fits as he inserts in the running game. Uh, he's been able in, in uh, what he's used to doing. He's played a lot of deep, uh, deep middle field coverage, deep half coverage. So kind of done all the things that safeties do in the NFL. Most quarterback Carson Palmer tonight calls the loss of John Kitna to the Lions irreplaceable. Palmer has mixed emotions saying he's happy for his friend, but considers Kitna irreplaceable as a player, a teammate, and a leader in the locker room. Kitna has signed a four-year contract with the Lions worth $10.5 million and will challenge Joey Harrington for the starting quarterback job. Kitna ends his five-year run with the Bengals, which includes the 2003 NFL Comeback Player of the Year Award. And with Kitna leaving, Rams pastor Jamie Martin visited Paul Brown Stadium today. Chris Redman was here yesterday, and we hear linebacker LeVar Arrington could be making a trip here soon. Bengals finally confirmed the visit from quarterback Brian Gracie, but no talk of a deal yet as they still want to talk to Jamie Martin. The former Ravens and Chiefs defensive tackle Lionel Dalton visited as well. He played four years with Marvin Lewis in Baltimore. Carson Palmer will meet the media for the first time since his injury at Paul Brown Stadium on Tuesday. Bengals were second worst punt return team in the NFL last year, and they hope to change that by signing former UC receiver Antonio Chapman to a two-year deal. Chapman comes over from the Packers, where he caught a season-high nine passes against the Bengals last year. He had a league-high 85-yard punt return against the Bears at 5'9", 185 pounds. He's a sure-handed slot receiver to replace Kevin Walter, who's off to the Texans. Good evening, everyone. The Bengals are entertaining Pro Bowl free agent linebacker LeVar Arrington tonight. Certainly a potential defensive upgrade if the price is right. And Ravens quarterback Anthony Wright is visiting as well. But still, there's no question that the Bengals' back-to-back -back playoff hopes rest on the arm and the healthy knee of number nine. So Bengals fans have been waiting for more than two months to hear how Carson is progressing from his reconstructive surgery on January 10th. Well, Palmer held a live TV press conference this afternoon. Paul Brown stated saying his rehab's right on track, showing a slight limp. He declared that preseason is his target to be back on the field in preparation to start the season opener. He has full range of motion, says he's recovering from knee surgery. Uh, and you know what? That's just rather commonplace these days. Um, with all the hard work and the rehab and the strengthening and all the things I'm doing, by the time I step on the field 100%, I don't want to be worrying about you know, is my knee strong enough? Is, is, is my knee ready for this? I, I want to be 100% and be ready to play like I was um, in the first play of that Pittsburgh game. Palmer rehabbing with Chris Henry every day, but the rookie wideout has bigger problems. Today, Henry pleaded guilty to marijuana possession, paid a $250 fine, and announced that he'd already completed a 28-day drug treatment program. Uh, Henry's sorry. Palmer's hopeful. Uh, I want to thank the NFL and Coach Marvin Lewis and the Bengals for trying to turn my life around. I need to grow up right now, and that will, and that is what I plan to do. He's had a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. All his families from New Orleans. People get moved all over the place. Um, he's he's had a tough year, and, and you throw on top of that, it's his rookie season. And he's playing, and he's trying to figure out an offense, and trying to make plays, and trying to make make a name for himself. And he's got so much commotion going on. It's it's tough to stay focused, and and he made a couple of mistakes and. Um, like I said, he'll move on from them. Well, the Bengals continue to work on secondary today. They signed Rashad Bauman to a one-year deal. Fifth-year corner was an unrestricted free agent. He played in 11 games for the Bengals last season with just one start. I guess the NFL doesn't really think Carson's knee is going to be ready because the Dolphins are picked to open the season at the Super Bowl champion Steelers on Thursday night, September 7th, and it's not the Bengals. The first Sunday night game, that'll pit Peyton Manning's Colts against his little brother Eli's Giants. A doubleheader for Monday night with the latter kicking off at 10 Eastern. And how about a triple header for Thanksgiving? The Lions and Cowboys still going to host games, as will the Chiefs. The entire schedule is going to be released in early April. The Bengals may be hoping that things didn't go so well in Miami and Joey Harrington can't wait to get to Cincinnati. The 27 year old being forced out of Detroit meeting with the Dolphins this evening before heading to Paul Brown Stadium tomorrow. Now the question is how much would the Bengals have to give up in trade for Joey and how much is left over for maybe LeVar Arrington or a defensive tackle? Don't know. Marvin ready to tame Chad Johnson. We do know that Lewis is the newest voting member of the competition committee. 
He's in favor of cutting down on the end zone celebrations. The new rule would outlaw the ball from being used as a prop. You can't drop to the ground. No excessive dancing. Brings a 15-yard penalty. Committee votes tomorrow. Chad told me tonight, don't worry about it. It won't stop me. Final results of our local 12 poll asking, should the NFL impose stricter rules on touchdown dances? And 27% say yes, 73% say uh-uh. Thanks to all of you who voted tonight. Evening, everyone. You have to have a pretty decent quarterback to win in the NFL. And the Bengals aren't sure when their best one is going to be healthy enough to play. So the search for another decent backup continues. Joey Harrington in town for talks today. No update on the status of those talks. Linebacker Hannibal Navy's re-ups for one more year in the networks. Showing the Bengals a little preseason love. Boys and Stripes open up on Sunday Night National TV. Paul Brown Stadium with the Washington Redskins on August 13th with Madden and Michaels. Then off to Buffalo the next week on Friday or Saturday. Right here on Local 12. Back home for an ESPN Monday Nighter against the Green Bay Packers on August 28th. And closing it out down the road in Indy against Peyton Manning and the Colts on September 1st. Regular season schedule will come out next month. Tough day for Chad Johnson because today the NFL Rules Committee cracks down on touchdown celebrations. So no more props, no getting on the ground, no excessive dancing. They all draw 15-yard penalties. Chad still vows to entertain the fans. It's a good day for quarterbacks, though, in the wake of the Carson Palmer injury. Hitting low on the quarterback going to be a point of emphasis this year for the refs. 15-yard penalties for hitting a QB with both feet on the ground below the knees, although they do say that Kimo Van Olhoffen's hit would not have drawn a flag under this new rule. I don't know what that means. And if you're a Bengals fan, the most encouraging thing about the future is that the offense has been so good, and they've got most of the big pieces in place to score a lot of points for a long time. Defensively, yeah, they need some work, but the head coach made his name building great defenses. And to help the Bengals, Marvin Lewis has gone back to one of the big building blocks he had on that Super Bowl team with the Ravens. Defensive tackle Sam Adams agreed to a deal this weekend and flew in tonight from Seattle to Cincinnati to make it official. He's a three-time Pro Bowler and a 12-year vet. Joe Daneman caught up with the newest Bengal tonight at CBG. We're at the Greater Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport and joined now by the latest member of the Cincinnati Bengals, Sam Adams. And Sam, what was it about the Bengals that really made you attracted to this situation? Well, I played here several times and, you know, for, for me, it, it was Marvin. Marvin's a great coach. They have a great organization. It was something that I, I really wanted to be a part of. I think that I could contribute and hopefully I can come in, come in and help the team. This is a division that really prides itself on playing smash mouth football. Some thinking you fit right in. That's right up my alley. That's that's how I enjoy doing it. And you know, Marvin's always preaching, bring a lunch pail and a hard hat, and we go get at it. And that's that's one of the reasons why I've, I've enjoyed playing for him. You know, this this division is a great division with the Steelers, Baltimore, and Cleveland. They have they're a lot, they have a lot of up and coming teams with the Steelers winning the Super Bowl, and it, it's it's great competition. I think the Cincinnati Bengals have the best opportunity to win. The Super Bowl and I wanted to be a part of that. This offseason, two of the biggest questions were safety and defensive tackle on the defensive side of the football. They filled safety with Dexter Jackson and now they've added you. Do you feel like you might be a final piece to what the Bengals are trying to do as far as advancing in the playoffs? Well, like Marvin said, they didn't need me here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to do my part and hopefully I can help contribute. They have a great defensive team already. They have great defensive tackles, especially some of the guys that the young guys that they've drafted well with. So I think that it's, 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 it's my it's my opportunity to come in and, and just take part in what they're doing. I have to conform to the fingerprint that they've laid down. I'm not here to save them. They are a great team already. I'm here to do my job and to add to the, to the success of the team. Very nice, Joe. Thanks a lot. Well, just down the road, the Bengals steal a little thunder on opening day, agreeing to a three-year deal with Sam Adams, six foot four, 340 pounds on that defensive tackle. He joins his teammates for the first day of conditioning and workouts, and he has his teammates excited about the possible improvements. I'm, I'm sure there's, there's going to be guys uh, uh, paying their pants right now. Uh, on the offense, knowing that they have to double team a guy like him. And then you can go and ask uh, one of the guys on our team, Bobby Williams. You know, he'd he rather play with Sam than play against him. What is just going to make us that much better? And we're going to challenge each other in all kind of ways, not only on the field, but in the weight room, too. And I mean, it just steps up everybody's level of play around around him and the O-line. You know, we, we charging anyway, so hey, we're going to be all right. 
believes that the Bengals are ready for prime time act and they label the boys and stripes for two national games in the regular season as the toughest schedule in the NFL comes Cincinnati's way. They begin 06 like they ended 05 in Kansas City back at home for the opener against the Browns then the first meeting with the Steelers in Pittsburgh and home to the Patriots before bye week at Tampa home to the Panthers and Falcons before going to Baltimore San Diego comes here a trip to rebuilt New Orleans off to Cleveland before the first national game which is Thursday night hosting Baltimore on the NFL Network then the Raiders visit before the next NFL matchup on Monday night on ESPN that'll be at Indianapolis Christmas Eve in the Rockies New Year's Eve to close out the regular season at home against the Steelers and a Sunday night game is still a possibility under the new flexible schedule in the final eight weeks when afternoon games can turn into night games at the network's request. If you fit that mold, you're one of Marvin's guys. Sam Adams is a Marvin Lewis guy. He was in Baltimore where they won a Super Bowl and he's in Cincinnati now because of Lewis and with the same expectation. No limp and just a small brace for Carson Palmer this week at Paul Brown Stadium. That was big news. But the bigger headline was this. 345 pounder Sam Adams bringing 12 years of experience and three Pro Bowls worth of confidence to the Bengals defense. My job is to, is to cause havoc and is to tear up any and everything in my path in order to get to the football. Adams was part of a Ravens defense coached by Marvin Lewis, and he played for Bengals defensive coordinator Chuck Bresnahan in Oakland. Both times he went to a Super Bowl. Neither trip left him satisfied. Where's my ring? Yeah. Well, my ring's at home because I intend to get one here in Cincinnati. I've talked to JT and B. Rob. We're all excited because, you know, we just want to have a good football team, and that's the key. Have, have the better people you have, the better football team you'll have. It just steps up everybody level of play around around him and the O-line. You know, we, we charging anyway, so hey, we're going to be all right. Truly a guy you'd rather play with than against. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not an overhaul, but a Bengals defense that was blistered at times last season looks a lot better on paper. Last year's top two picks, David Pollock and Odell Thurman, are both a year older. Madiu Williams is healthy and paired at safety with a solid pickup in Dexter Jackson. And now Adams up front has the potential to make the entire unit more effective. Sam, you know, he's one of those guys that, that demands a double team at, at every play. Then you put Dexter back there with Madu, and you have two deadly safeties that can make plays at any given time. So it, it'll be hard to, you know, get some of those deep balls that teams got on us at the end of last year. You want to be very nasty and dominant, and that's what we're looking to do here. We want to be a dominant defense. We want you to understand that when you come here to play Cincinnati or you have us on the schedule, it's going to be a long day, so you better bring your lunch pail and a hard hat, and we're going to get after you. If Adam sounds a lot like Marvin Lewis, it's because he is a lot like Marvin Lewis. Adam says in Baltimore, he built a relationship with Lewis based on trust. And he always wanted to play for Lewis again. You have to drink the Kool-Aid. You have to believe in what he's doing. We're a family. We're going to train together. We're going to work together. And we're going to win this championship together. It's, it's coming together. The, the, the puzzle is coming together. Also new at Paul Brown Stadium this week, a quarterback. The Bengals are apparently still looking for somebody, maybe Jamie Martin. But they've got three now, Carson Palmer, Craig Krenzel, and Doug Johnson. I'm just going to control what I can bring to the team, whatever I can do to help make it better, be prepared. My number's called, and um, you know, when Carson gets back, you know, hopefully just be his second eyes on the field, kind of like what uh, Kitna was to him. You know, yeah. it's, it's always good to have an experienced guy to come back to the sideline and talk to him about what's going on. So, you know, that's uh, whatever whatever my role is, I'm going to play it the best I can play it.